Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Games. Today, we're going to continue on part three on building our third-person cover shooter. So before we actually get started, I want to go ahead and make some minor notes. In our third-player player controller, I added a comment around the sprint button, denoting that it was a sprint button. And then in the animation blueprint, I also changed rifle stop to sprint stop to further clarify what it actually does. So for the actual tutorial today, we're going to go ahead and add an aim offset to our player. If we go ahead and hit play right now, and we move left and right, our camera is attached directly to the rotation of the character, so it'll move left and right with us. But if we look up and down, he doesn't follow aiming where we're looking at. So we want to use an aim offset to correct that. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go into our animations into the aim offsets folder and these animations across the top here the very first series the aim CC through the aim U are going to be the animations that we're going to use. And so we want to double click on the aim CC to open it up. And what we're going to notice here, uh, we want to check a few things to make sure the animations are properly set up. Under additive settings to the left here, we want to make sure that it is set as an additive anim type to mesh space. The base pose type is selected animation frame. And I'm going to go ahead and make all of the animations uh, preview under the rifle underscore idle animation. And you want to make sure that it is selected to the root motion. So you're going to have to go through every one of these animations and make sure all those settings are in fact the same. Once that's completed, we're going to go back to our main window here and inside the aim offset folder, I'm going to go ahead and right click. We're going to go to aim or correction. We're going to go to animation. We're going to go to aim offset. And we're going to select our UE4 mannequin skeleton. And it's going to create a new aim offset for us. So I'm going to call this uh, rifle aim offset. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to double click on that rifle aim offset. So under the additive settings to the left here, under preview base pose, I'm going to search for the rifle underscore idle. Once again, we're going to want to make sure that it is the one that resides in the root motion folder. And I'm going to go ahead and select that. And to the center of the screen here under parameters, the X axis label, we're going to call player aim yaw. And it's going to have a range from negative 90 to 90. Four divisions is fine. And under the Y axis label, I'm going to call this player aim pitch. And the range is going to be the same. It's going to be negative 90 to 90. And I'm going to go ahead and click on apply parameter changes. And it'll shift up our graph here and put the correct labels on each of the axes into the asset browser at the right, we're going to take the aim CC, which aims straight down the center, and we're going to drag it to the center of our graph. Now you'll notice the character kind of explodes up here. Just hang on for a minute. It'll eventually sort itself out. We're going to take the aim D, which is the aim down animation, and drag it to the center bottom. The aim left, we're going to drag to the left center and you'll see now our character actually looks like an assembled character again. The LD is for the left down so we're going to drag that to the bottom left. Left up is going to be to the left and up. R is for right. RD is for right down. RU is for right up. And the AIM U is going to be straight up. 
So now we see as we move our mouse around our 2D graph here, our player up top will react to it. And it looks like the animation is working pretty well. So we can go ahead and save this and close it out. In our characters folder, we're going to go into our player characters and open our 3P player anim BP. So we're going to go ahead and double click on the rifle walk. And right now we just have that classic rifle strafe movement in here. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this back. And under Asset Browser, we're going to search for the aim offset that we made before. And we're going to drag this into our graph. And we want to connect the strafe movement to the aim offset and the aim offset into our final animation pose. Now there are the two player inputs here. So we're going to have to create variables for that. So I'm going to add a variable down here and we're going to call this player aim yaw. And we're going to make it a float. And then we're going to create a second variable. We'll call it player aim pitch. So we'll go ahead and drag these onto our graph. and plug them in appropriately. And we can go ahead and hit compile and save. Now we're going to have to give these player aim yawn, player aim pitches an actual value. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and go over to our event graph and we're going to use the sequence node that we put in before. And we also left this try get pawn owner that we didn't use before. We're going to start using this now. So we're going to go ahead and drag off from the try get pawn owner and we're going to cast to our 3p if I can spell correctly today. So we're going to cast to our 3p player character and we're going to do drag the then one pin down to our cast. As our player character here, we're going to want to get a couple of values. So we're going to drag off of our player character and we want to get control rotation. We're also going to drag off of that cast and we want to get our actor rotation. And from the controller rotation, we want to get a delta. So you get this option for delta rotator. And we're going to connect up the get actor rotation to the B pin. Now we're going to have to take our player aim yaw and our player aim pitch. And we want to right click into the graph here and we want to make a rotator. So we're going to go ahead and plug our values into this make rotator. So the player aim pitch is going to go into the Y pitch and the player aim yaw is going to go into the Z yaw. And we're going to drag off of this make rotator to our interp2. And the target for this is going to be the result of the delta rotator. Now it wants a value for delta time. So I'm going to go back to the update animation and I'm going to promote the delta time X to a variable and we'll just call this delta T. And we can go ahead and connect that in line there. So we can take this delta T 
and plug it into our delta time. Now, from the R interp to, we want to go ahead and break our rotator. And we want to take each of these values and we want to search for clamp angle. And the minimum angle degree is going to be negative 90. The max angle degree is going to be a positive 90. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to plug our yaw into the copied version. So one for the pitch is going to be going into a clamp angle. And one from the yaw is going to be going into the other clamp angle. We don't really care about the roll in this situation. So we're going to want to get our player aim yaw here. And we're going to want to set that as well as the player aim pitch. And then we're going to connect up the clamp angle from the pitch to the player aim pitch. And the clamp angle from the yaw to the player aim yaw. So we can go ahead and connect our cast up to setting of these variables. And then I'm just going to go ahead and neaten things up a little bit. All right, so at this point we're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and comp hit compile and save. And let's go ahead and test it out. So we hit play, we look up and down, our player is now rotating with us. Now one thing to note is even though I created this blend space in 2D, since the character is rotating with the camera, there's no look left and look right. But instead of creating a second blend space later on down the line for some of the other things we're going to do, uh, I just decided it would be simpler to create one and then use that one for as many things as possible. So right now we can look up, we can look down, we can look left, and we can look right. So that's going to complete today's tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and thanks for watching.